Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen. Today we're going to take a look at a case study from one of my clients. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, so here we go again with another uh, case study and uh, just like the first case study, this is a study which is all about a single event, a root cause. Uh, and it shows simple use of diagrams in order to find the root cause or to find the fact that it is a root cause um, and how simple and how simple that is. But it also shows the difference between chaos, control and excellence. This is a process that was in control. Something's gone wrong. When that happens, it's usually a single event. So it's all about first time, first time pass rate for this particular for this particular product, here it is. Let's show you the product. It's essentially a sensor that fits uh, on an aeroplane wing and it tells you where the aileron is sitting. It tells you where the, the flap is sitting on the wing. Uh, and essentially this rod moves up and down inside a coil. And the coil therefore can sense where the where the end of the where the end of the rod is. That's the that's the product. Here's the product which is sitting on the test jig, and what the test jig is doing is moving the part a known distance and then making sure that the zero position is correct. So it's looking for a particular zero position, and that's what the product has got to do once it's assembled so very very straightforward the current yield however look has gone to 44 percent when it used to be a hundred percent no problem at all you're going to see that in the run chart in a second you can see that um, currently if that uh, continues uh, over the year it's going to cost the company almost a hundred and sixty three thousand $164,000 um, so very expensive even though the units are uh, it's quite low number of units but uh, very expensive uh, product to, to make scrap with and here's the current performance graph this is just discrete data pass fail here's how the batches have been performing here we go look everything in control it's a process in control there is no chaos going on here and then all of a sudden, what the hell was that? What's gone on here? So this is, this is the case that when you look at graphs, you're looking to say, is my problem chaos? Is my problem control? Or do I want to go to excellence? Not sure I've spelt that right, but still. Or do you want to go to excellence? And if you know whether you're in chaos, control or excellence, typically if you're in control, this problem is going to take three days, three minutes, three weeks, maybe to fix. It's going to be short term. If you're in chaos, three months, minimum three months. You have to know what type of problem you have before you start. Here is another great example. We are in control, something's happened, what is it? Now this happens to be measurable data uh, in terms of what we're doing. This null position is measurable. The jig that you saw earlier measures the null position. So we can take, in this case, 25 units and we can look at the first time pass data. And there we have it, lovely normal distribution. So in that sense, uh, it's, it's in control in, in the sense of uh, we're getting a normal distribution, which is always good to see. It's not, um, it's not too chaotic. But if we look at that as a capability diagram, ooh, okay, we're off center. This is one of the reasons why when you look at this, it's normally very easy to move processes on the mean. If you're trying to shift the mean, which I'm going to call the signal, 
that's usually very easy to do. There's dials, settings, tolerances, nominal positions that are very easy to move around and to change the signal. If what you're trying to do on the other hand is affect the noise, if you've got a capability problem that looks like this, for example, and the defects are sticking out both sides. So it isn't about moving the signal. That is about squeezing the noise. If you are trying to squeeze the noise, that's going to take three months. This is going to take three days. Maybe three minutes if it's a dial on a machine. So there are the diagrams telling you. What, what's my problem? How difficult is it to fix? What have I got to do next? And, and this is what these diagrams are about. We call this, obviously my training is called Six Sigma. This isn't Six Sigma. This has been around for 60, 70, 80 years. This is just good process analysis. So now we know we're trying to shift the mean. We've got to find out what's done this because this has clearly been sitting happily uh, inside those tolerances for a long time. And suddenly something's changed. What is it? So, okay, we're going to look uh, at the process flow for the, for the process. Uh, we've also got to look at the variables for the product. So this isn't just about the way we're assembling it, although that could be an issue. It could be tolerances. Something's wrong with the tolerance. So this is about the parts as well as the process. There's the process flow. Uh, there's a more detailed process flow. So we've got winding, we've got assembly, we've got making the electrical connections, uh, and we've got the test at the end. Yeah, so we've got a little bit more detail there to help us. And then we're going and looking at the, uh, the wire assembly method and the process, the case assembly as well. Then we start looking at the variables. Are the variables under control? Well, if you look, um, lots of C's here. So that's telling us that actually process is, process is well controlled. Do we have a standard operating procedure? Are we happy with that standard operating procedure? Is it clear and unambiguous? And do we use it? The answer here is, yeah. What else we got? Tube winding. Again, look, all C's. Yeah, the whole thing. Happy. Process is in control. All good. Then one of the things we've done is taken a look at the tolerance stack up. So what does the design create? Should the design create that off-center distribution that we saw earlier? If we stack all the tolerances up, what actually should happen? Well, here is a Monte Carlo simulation. So this is a, this is a calculation. It's a prediction. Okay, it's a prediction of how the tolerances should act and react. What distribution will they create? Clearly not the distribution we saw earlier. Slightly off center, but actually the other side of the center, whereas we were seeing the actual result all over here. So the design, the tolerance stack ups should work. So the, the tolerances are right. Okay, let's keep going. So case assembly. Um, there's something identified there. So all the parts are okay. Lots of C's, size of the parts, etc. So everything's to tolerance. The tolerances should work, etc., uh, etc. Et <coughs> but we do have this little question mark here. Parts have been changed recently. Keep it moving. So in what way were the parts changed recently? Well, the changes relate actually not to the internal assembly of the item, but to an external face. So this was changed recently. So these external tolerances, these two things here, were both modified recently. And in theory, these shouldn't be having um, an effect on that 
tolerance. They were outside and not part of the, the tolerance stack up at all. This is the machining operation. So um, it, it is the, the machining of those faces there. However, it turns out those faces are the datum face for the jig that we saw earlier. So when the part is placed in the jig and then we try and measure the datum of the shaft that's running through the center, this is the datum face right here. And what we've done is moved the datum face because of some other, some other requirement, a requirement obviously to do with the way the, the part performs or the way the part fits uh, in, its, in its position on the plane. It's been modified without giving it a thought of the fact that it happens to be a datum face for the jig. And what they've done is kicked that distribution all over to the left that you saw earlier in the CPK diagram. So we had the CPK diagram. The result was sitting sort of like that. And that was all to do with that single change right there. Now, of course, this is a great example if you wanted to go and do, and they haven't done this, but if you wanted to go and do the famous five whys, asking why five times. Why was the, yeah, why did the parts fail? Because the tolerance was changed. Why was the tolerance changed, etc., cetera, et cetera. If you want to do the five whys analysis to get to the real root cause, why did we not know that that face had another another customer associated with it other than just the final customer? That would be a great thing to do. It's not something that they've done in this case study. They found the problem. They fixed the jig. They've centered that distribution. As I said, how long did it take them? Three days. That's all it took them using the right tools, knowing what's going on, taking the right action. That's what these tools are about. Are you in chaos? Are you in control? Or do you want excellence? Once you know, you know what to do next, and you know how long the problem will take to fix and what you've got to do to fix it. Study. Drink tea and read the paper. My latest book covers all the principles that I cover in this video, this case study, other videos on my site. And if you really want to know how to make Six Sigma world class engineering, drink tea and read the paper is the book that you should read. Six Sigma is just a new name for world class engineering that's been around for almost one hundred years from the greats Schuett, Deming, Duran, Taguchi they were all around before the phrase Six Sigma was ever invented and all the principles that's covered in Six Sigma all the tools that are covered in Six Sigma all belong to these guys go learn about them drink tea read the paper put in Lulu RC and you should get a 25% discount. I look forward to receiving your support. Well, hope you found that useful. Uh, if you've got any questions on that particular topic, or indeed anything that you're doing in Six Sigma that you need some help with, drop me a line. Hope to hear from you soon. Subscribe or drop me an email and I hope to hear from you soon.